three of this current Arsenal team would get into the starting lineup of Arsenal Invincibles 2003 2004. What? Party's <laughs> I would rather have Will Todd than Patrick Abamyang. Yeah? Who's <laughs> that? Is that yeah, name? Pierre yeah. Emerick. <laughs> Joe presents In Defense of, brought to you by Betfall. Yes, people, Steve O the Madman here, and welcome to In Defense of, brought to you by Joe and Betball. Now, in this show, I invite some of my friends down to my gaff with a football topic they feel passionate about. Now, it could be, is Leicester winning the league the greatest achievement in Premiership history? Or, who's the greatest manager of all time? They have their say, I'll have my say, we'll hash it out, and maybe see if they can change my mind. Stepping up to the away end today is one of my funny friends, Funny looking friends, Jacob Hooley! Bow, bow, bow! <laughs> bro, how are you, mate? You good? I am good, bruv. So, Jay, how you been? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm really good. Obviously, good. you do stand up comedy. You are a funny guy. I was being genuine when I said that, but we're allowed back out now. How's that know, been man. for you, man? It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm allowed to go out and actually speak to normal people Isn't apart it? from just my missus and my baby. Or They're... people on the, online. In it. Weirdos. Yeah, freaks. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jacob. What have you come to my gaff to discuss, bruv? Three of this current Arsenal team would get into the starting lineup of Arsenal Invincibles 2003 2004. What? I, I, know, I, know, I know what you're going to say, yeah? That was an insane team. I watched that team a lot. I, probably one of the best Premier League teams whoa, ever. Whoa, whoa, ever. whoa. You know what? You know what? You're going to. You can have your say in why you've come to me with this madness, but go up to the podium, uh, lay down your case. I'll lay down a defence and then we can come and hash it out here. Sweet, this is sweet, mental, sweet. bruv. Fine. Now listen, I've got to start this off by saying I'm an Arsenal fan, right? So I understand what the Invincibles are, like proper team, like historic team. Probably never be a team that does that ever again. Got to respect them, right? And I've got to acknowledge that current Arsenal team, mid-table, average, whatever. But there's a reason that I genuinely believe a few of our players would get into that team back then. First of all, football's changed an awful lot, man. Like tactically, technically, the players are fitter now. I genuinely believe that there's players that were winning things back then that wouldn't get into teams now. Right. Second, I think like every good team, whether we're talking about the Arsenal Invincibles, whether we're talking about treble winning team for Man United, they do have bad players. You're never, ever going to have a team that has 11 world class players. There's always going to be a few players in there that if we're really being honest, you can take them out of there. And thirdly, the Arsenal players from today that I'm going to put into that old team, they're proper players, man. They're, they're players that have done things for other clubs. They're players that have done things at international level and they're performing consistently for this Arsenal team who are bad. So genuinely, I believe that these three Arsenal players get in that old image. Jacob, you made some great points, but I'm afraid you are talking the most amount of I have ever heard from any Arsenal fan. And that's saying, saying, start the clock. I'm going to start off with the team. From 1 to 11, the team was tremendous. You had world-class in every single position. Not just world-class talent, you had world-class stats. That's very important. They were producing. The players you're probably going to bring from this new team do not produce. Let's talk about individuals. From start to back, like I said, you had a keeper who changed the game of English football at the time. He started moving things quicker. You had a fullback, both fullbacks, again, up and down, but could defend. It's very important that they could defend. You had a midfield general in Patrick Vieira, one of the greats. And then going forward, you had Dennis Bergkamp and you had the great Henri. You ain't taking any of them out, I'll tell you that. And let's talk about, you said, how football has changed. Yes, football has changed. They've got quicker, stronger. They can do more with a ball. But let me tell you where it hasn't changed, Jacob. Up there. Players now do not have the IQ. They do not have the IQ to get into the Invincible team. But let's talk about it, bro. Some great points, some great points. But there's one point in particular you said that made me think, I think he's right, you know. And that was when you said about how far football's come. Move. From then, so expand on that, bro. It's just moved so far, like not not just like players, but the way teams play now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The, ta the tactics teams are using, like you look what Pep's doing at City. Mm. You know what, what what Chelsea have done yes. in recent years, even. Do you know what I mean? Like they're doing things that I don't think teams would be able to deal with back then. What you're talking about, to be fair, is right, but 
it started with Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. Lehman getting the ball, playing it quick. All keepers do that now. Now, he wasn't yeah, as yeah. good on the ball as the Edisons and the Allisons now, but um, I think Lehman and the players in that team were the start of what we see now. Remember when Arsenal, you know, Arsenal fan, playing quick football, getting forward Philly, quick. Yeah, mate, Philly, Philly. Like, it changed, but then this is 15 years ago, mate. Mm. This is why I have to keep pinching myself. It's been yeah. 15 years, man. And so now, it's not just goalkeepers playing the ball quickly. Like, centre-backs, completely different back to back then, man. Like, you look at what a centre-back used to do back then. You used to have centre-backs who just lump. But I don't mind that. This is the thing. So I know you're going to come with... Players are quicker, more technique. When I, I, I played football, don't like to say it, but <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I could do kick-ups and then the skillful players could probably do around the world. Yeah. That was like, whoa. One, one of them. One, yeah, one. one. None of that, none yeah, of that, yeah, right? Nah. So you're right, and all of that's moved forward. But for me, bro, the brain. Like, you've got players now that they're making same errors, like five, six years into their careers. Back in the day, bro, like, a player would come in like it was more structured this now, is a really young Arsenal team that I'm supporting at the moment right we're talking like 22 years, mm -hmm, 23 mm -hmm. years. they ain't going to sit around finishing 8th season in season out you're going to see the top players from that the Sackers the Smith Rose the Odegaards maybe even mm -hmm. 5 years time they, they're going to be in Champions League finals mate so in 5 years time then they'll get in the Invincible <laughs> Three players that I'm putting in first of all Bukayo Saka I believe gets in that team ahead of Freddie Jumberg nope S Second, no. second, Thomas Party, I believe, gets in that team ahead of Gilberto Silva. No, Jake. Right? No. <laughs> Let me just finish off. Aaron Ramsdale gets in that team ahead of Jens Lehmann. No, uh, no. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? Um, right, let's, let's start from Freddie. Disrespect. Bro, you're an Arsenal fan. I'm not, mate. And he's a legend. He's a legend. I'll say that now. He's an so how can, how can a legend. kid, yeah, and I love Saka, by the way. He's, 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 he's going to be great. I know he's going to be great. But right now, he's so far behind. And I'm not saying Freddie was a leader, by the way. Um, he weren't but, a leader. He weren't a leader. He wasn't he a leader. But a leader. football IQ... He, mate, he was in the right position at the right time to finish moves off, yeah? Bukayo That's Saka. the hardest part of football, though. It's a very, no, it's a very hard and part of football. And talking of finishing moves off, and I don't like to bring this up, but, bro, one of the guys you're talking about couldn't finish the game from 12 yards, bro. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the fact that in a Euros final, at 19 years of age, Bukayo Saka has taken a decisive penalty. Freddie Jungberg no, played, I'm, I'm played, played, Freddie for, played, played for Sweden. In Freddie's career, did he even have a moment like that? Saka, like, he hasn't got an armband on him, but he might as well because he carries that Arsenal team, man. Yeah. He carries a team of men. Every time we're playing badly, nothing's happening, right? We're too static. We're not creating enough. The one player who drops in and goes, give me the ball, I'm going to beat someone. No, he does, something. he does, he does. Saka if I'm, I'm not man. taking that away from him and like he's a good player in a bad team to be honest exactly with you, right? Ex and that's hard to be when Henri Bergkamp and these players weren't in the team they got injured um, the likes of Freddie stepped up the likes of Will Todd stepped up yeah. Saka in his first season breaking into the team and let's have it right when he first broke into the team he was a backup left back mm. and he got 14 mm. assists that was mad. That was more than any other teenager in Europe has ever done that before, man. He's season. broke a record. Yeah, he's done that since, though. Assists. But Maybe he's a fullback. When you look at our team, mm -hmm. there's no creativity in that midfield. There's, there's not an awful lot going on up front. If you've got someone who can assist, you have to put him near the box. And that's what's happened with Saka. And credit to him, mm -hmm. Saka's a player who's played left back. He's played left wing back. Yeah, yeah. He's played as an eight in midfield. He's played on left wing. He's played right wing. And he's performed consistently. Genuinely but, believe this then, like... We could take <clears throat> Freddie Lundberg, yeah, the Arsenal great, yeah. out and put little baby Saka, who's Mate, not it's, ready it's, yet. It's, it's, ba it's baby Saka, but when a player's got that level of talent, they kick the door down, mate. Can I just make one more got point in. before we finish on this year? Can I just quickly... Has Freddie Jungberg ever done that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Has Freddie Jungberg ever got himself an inflatable unicorn... And mate, mate, do you know how many of them unicorns they've sold since then? They're sold out, bro. If that's if you're saying take Freddie okay, out, okay, okay. Who else could you take out of that team? I'm taking Gilberto Silva, and I'm replacing him oh, with Thomas said, Party. Said, oh my God, Party's <laughs> absolutely. Do you believe he's a crap midfielder? Absolutely. Do, do you not rate him? Horse. Do you not? Do you not rate he him? He don't defend, brother. Listen, mate. He played in a D.A. Go Simeone team for That's five years. That's when he was years, good. But he's come years, here now. He's come to Arsenal years. and you're trash. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> has, has, I'm sorry. But it's 
gone on to him because he's not looking great. We've Arsenal him. fans, comment, We've man. We've infected him. We've infected him, bruv. He had no mask on, bruv. Trust me. He needs, he needs the vaccine, rude boy, because Arsenal has infected him. Now, he's had injuries. There you go. In, see? The fact that you've team. had to say that. No, no, no. There you go. Come on, come on. He's, he's, he's had injuries. Like, uh, Arteta, like. It's been a slow start. It's been a slow it's start. It's been a for him. slow, but at the same time, he's had a few performances. Hang on, mate. Fudge. <laughs> Arte, yeah. Let's talk about Gilberto, rude boy. Okay, okay. Let's, what let's a talk player. about mate, mate. What a player. Back then, what a player. Because back then, he was a holding midfielder. What did he have to do? Tackle, intercept, play it five yards to someone else. Oh, it's so important. But who does that now? Who, who's two calls holding midfielder? You're not looking Eugenio. at Gilberto, you're looking at Jorginho. And what? He's a footballer. He's a footballer. And that's why he teams now headers. are losing when they shouldn't be losing. But they won the Champions League. Two can won the Champions League with that. Tuchel might well win the league this season with that. Like, look around now. Mm -hmm. Top teams now. Who's got a Gilberto Silva? No, but this is it. Who's got a Gilberto Oh, well, hang Silva? on though, Jay. Who's, who's, got, who's got a player who tackles, intercepts, heads a ball, and the rest of it leave it? Well, you lot thought you did with Partey, but you, he no, doesn't mate, tackle, no, he doesn't no, intercept. No, 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 listen, no. Listen, Partey's a very different player. Pa Partey, uh, like, okay, stats-wise, before coming to Arsenal, right, for the last five years in Europe, no one had beaten a man in central midfield more often than Partey, apart from Thiago Alcantara. Is it? He, he's a complicated footballer, man. He's not just about tackles, because football's changed. Mm. It's all about pressing now. I it is that. all about pressing. You put Gilberto Silva at the base of our midfield now, I'm telling you, mate, he's in trouble. He's getting but, pressed, and he hasn't got a pass on him, so oh, he's back off it. Jacob. Jacob, 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 Jacob. He's Brazilian, cut. <laughs> hey, even the, the, the road sweeper in Brazil and the ball drops to him, he's, he's doing a flipping no, Dogo go Bonita advert. Listen, I, I ain't saying he's trash. I ain't saying Gilberto's oh, trash. Oh, wow. Of course I ain't saying he's trash. But the point I'm making is, whether it's Parties, Jorginho, Thiago, who plays in a similar position, mm -hmm. they receive a ball off a centre-back, head up, gone. If you take a player like Party, who's transformed that position, mm, who's yeah. part, part of an era who have transformed that position, mm -hmm. if you put them back in those old teams, they're changing things, man. And, and this is why mm. people want to do this. Because as soon as you do evolve, as soon as you do move a position, whether we're talking about someone like a Party who plays holding midfield completely differently, whether you're even talking about like the way Pep has his inverted fullbacks, you start doing that, you're tearing people apart because they're not ready for it. Yeah, true. You take a Thomas Party, put him back in 2004, yeah. where people People think, oh, he's just a holding midfielder. He's just going to win the ball off me and roll it over. And suddenly he's driving through. No, hey, that's a different I will, force, I will, man. I will, I will. Do you think Partey could make the Invincibles team better? 100%. This, this one for me is simple. This one for me is genuinely simple. 100% he would make them better. That's another attacking outlet. I want to ask the people that are watching, by the way. I never really come this early to you lot, but do you think Partey makes the Invincibles better? In the comments there, man. Who was the last player? Last one, I'm saying Aaron Ramsdale. Gets in that team ahead of Jens. It's an over 18 show. <laughs> Bleep me. <laughs> off, Jacob. Honestly, brother. Honestly. Bruv, bruv, bruv. This geezer's been relegated Again, two bruv, seasons bruv. in a row. <laughs> Mate, yeah, You're going on against a guy that's oh, yeah. a German who was a German legend. So listen, I've got to be honest. When when, when I heard this summer that we we're gonna throw 23 million quid at Aaron Ramsdale, as you say, relegated twice. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I was like, I don't know about this guy. I watched him for Arsenal. Mate, I swear now he has transformed that defense. Yeah. Part of it is that, yeah? This sounds mental. I'm gonna say it. The guy's there for vibes. He genuinely instills that defence with confidence. He's there for, like, every corner he's organising. He's, he's slapping people on the back if they get a header. Like, honestly, he improves the team so much just by doing that. But the <laughs> oh, yeah. next thing with this guy, mate, his feet are nuts. Yeah, mate, yeah. Honestly, modern day, modern day mo keeper. Modern day keeper. You, you go through, I think Arsenal played about eight games this season. If you were to pick the best passes out of those eight games, they're all Ramsdale passes. And right? this is it the takes... problem with football, that it the is... best passer in the team's a keeper. <laughs> it makes it... That's it there for me, bro. Right. You put someone like Ramsdale who can just deliver that ball fast, they're off, they're gone. Keepers like Ramsdale. I mean, like keepers like Edison, Allison, because that is well, the you're moment. putting him in that elk. I, putting him there. I, I'm, I'm not saying he's that standard. No, but I'm saying in the sense of he, he plays like that. and that, That's the style of play. That's the style of play I think we're looking at with Ramsdale. He's, he's, he's one of them who genuinely moves the ball so quickly, so well along the floor. I don't think this is a guy just doing what he's told. This, this is a guy who sees the pitch, sees gaps, and puts the ball into those gaps, man. This is a guy who's got good vision, which is... A mad thing to say for a goalkeeper. Yes. I love Jens Slayman. I, I, I love all these players that I'm taking out of this team. Mm. You go back to 2004, mate. Look who we were being linked to in the transfer window. They were linking us to goalkeepers. People weren't talking about Lehman as a top goalkeeper. People like They were saying that's an area Arsenal can improve. But when they were doing that, he then became, OK, we've done a good job in keeping him, I'm sure. I remember he became, didn't he? Not, <clears> I'm not, I'm okay, not an Arsenal uh, fan, but I'm sure there's a point where... 
Layman's our guy. Layman's our guy. Two years later, Champions League final. Oh, go on. He gets sent off. Sent off. Oh, no. He gets oh, no. sent off, man. And and the one thing people are always going to say about that invincible team, the one thing whenever, and I'm I'm, I'm the first to say it in a pub. That invincible team is the best team ever. The first pe- thing people say to me, they never won a Champions League. Why is that? It's Jens Lehmann. Great discussion, Jay. Honestly, it's made me think. <laughs> it's made me think. But I know you have come in to talk about the Invincibles starting eleven. But I'm going to give you a chance here. Okay. And I don't even think this either. But do you think any of your strikers now could probably be the backup for Henri? Well, get in the squad. Yeah, because I believe, and this is going to be wild. You think, but. I truly believe it with Chest that Canu, Will Todd are better than the strikers you've got now. And I mean, putting Aubameyang in that. I would rather have Will Todd than Patrick Aubameyang. Yeah? Who's <laughs> that? Yeah, right, Pierre Emerick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you've got to respect Aubameyang, man. you got yeah, like, he's, he, he, he's, got... He's, he's been here, I think, four years, got two golden boots in that time. Nah, he's for, done, for he's a bits. I'm bad harsh. team, for a bad Arsenal team at Dortmund. He won things. He's a good player. But the, the reason I think. Yeah. He wouldn't just get in that Arsenal subs bench, but I, th- I think he'd get in that team a bit, right? Not not regular, <laughs> not regular. Don't get me wrong, I'm not taking out Henri or Burkamp, okay. but I think he could be an asset in that team. Back then, we're talking 4 4 2, yeah? Yep. It's not the same as now where everyone plays with a lone striker, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I think what a lot of people forget with that team back then, Henri, he's got his similarities with Damian, yes. you know, both quick, both drift to the left. Number you know, 14. Number it. 14, do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> almost like they thought about it. But then, like, Henri, like, he got a lot of assists, man. Yeah. 20 yeah. assists yeah. in a season. You said to someone like Aubameyang, mate, how do you fancy coming on end of a game, half an hour to go, team's tired, your movement in the box, your pacing behind, and you've got a player next to you who can give 20 assists Is in a season. Is this the Aubameyang that we see with the dreads, uh, that we, <laughs> <laughs> we see flying to Milan every weekend? Because if you're saying to that Aubameyang, do you want to come and play this, second this, fiddle? This is, this is pre-malaria, pre-COVID, focused <coughs> Aubameyang. As a super sub, a player who, as we've said about Aubameyang, can win golden boots. Mate. Kind of wasn't a, a starter, but he deliberately had someone that he knew didn't mind playing that second fiddle mentality-wise, yeah, yeah. attitude-wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. but when come on, could change a game, man. So I probably wouldn't say Kanu's better than Aubameyang. I won't say that. But Slavon Wiltord, bro, come on. Some, Bro. Of, some of these names, man. We've got Slavin Wiltord. Oh, this is like the Polish Wiltord, is it? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't try and get me with that, nah, nah, but The truth is, Wiltord, he was a big game player. He, I think he won a league for us at Old Trafford. Yes, he did. I, I look at our bench now, like, who am I putting in there instead of Wiltord, like Pepe? No I'm not way. putting Pepe. I'm saying no, Pepe no, I'm with you, brother. is the worst signing in the last 10 years in the whole of the Premier League. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you million. that. I'll give you that. I can't. I can't even fight out. I got yeah, a hold that one. I want him to do well. I want him to. No, I, like I don't want to talk about Pepe, man. There's one player who is on this Arsenal bench right now. Again, hasn't had the the best 18 months, last 18 months or so. But I genuinely think he's got the potential to be maybe bigger than bigger than a wheel to a bigger than. That's Martinelli. Oh, Martinelli is wow. a crazy player, man. He had crazy. a big injury yep, 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 last yep, yep. season. Yep, big injury yep. last season. But when you watch that kid, yeah, he's amazing. And this is my thing. We discussed this before about world-class players. And for me, that's all they're lacking is consistency. So it's like, what that Arsenal Invincible team, and it clearly showed because they ended up invincible, mm. was consistency. Yeah, Philly. You know what I mean? So whether it's Lundberg, Gilberto, or Lehman in goal, they were consistent. Lehman was consistently coming out, demanding, uh, commanding the box. Lundberg was consistently getting into the box. Gilberto was consistently not giving the ball away and sweeping up, man. Yeah, like, yeah, it's all yeah, consistent. Yeah. They're so good and so underrated that they make a good team great. I think every single player. So when you said <coughs> weak, I don't think they had a weak player in that team. Oh, okay. Nowhere. They, they weren't weak, but at the same time, we're watching, we're, we're watching these Arsenal players do bits. Let's have it right. Saka's Sack done bits over the last two years and he's doing it in a bad team. Where did Jungberg go after Arsenal? When did he go? Oh, yeah. oh, I can say he went to West Ham. And what did he do? And what did he do? <laughs> nothing. Exactly, you, mate. Nothing. You, as soon as you took those players out of a good team and put mm-hmm. them in bad teams, Lehman, where did he go? Again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Gilberto, what did he do after Arsenal? Not a lot. What, what did they do before Arsenal? Not a lot. I can't do, do you know that. what I mean? So it's, but you're watching these players mm-hmm. that I'm talking about in bad teams and they're doing stuff, man. The players that I'm talking about, they never got to play in a team like that. And they probably never will. They'll probably never play at a team that's at that level. But if they were, like judging them already on what they're doing in like average teams, really, they could do insane bits. Bruv, you've brought some great 
points, man. And um, again, I'm going to walk away thinking about them and I will be bringing them into my arguments on Twitter. But <laughs> um, you haven't changed my mind, mate. I'm nah. sorry. Maybe a Bamiang gets on the bench. I'll give you that. Is it? Yeah. All right, I'll hold I'll that. give you that. Appreciate that, Brother. mate. Appreciate it. Lovely. So Jacob made some great points there. But do you agree? Do you think the players that he named will improve the Invincible team? I don't think they will. But what do you think? Make sure you have your say in the comments. I've been Steve Rowe, the Madman. This has been my funny looking friend, Jacob. <laughs> this is In Defence Of, brought to you by Joe and Betball. Ta-da. You've been watching In Defence Of, brought to you by Joe and Betball.